to our Carol Service 2021. Uh, I'd like to do a few acknowledgements first before we start, and especially for those people who are at home so that they feel that they're part of this, that we thank St Anne's Parish and Father Godric for allowing us to use the, the church this morning. He always says that we're part of the parish, we're always over the road, but we are here as guests. So now to thank uh, Miss Monteith for all the hard work she's put into uh, putting tonight's carol service together, and Jacinta, our chaplain, aided by Mr. Keown and Mr. Owen as well, who's filming it for us this evening. We also have uh, a staff choir or community choir as well, who are going to be singing with us this evening. It's unusual circumstances. Um, we would normally have a full church at seven o'clock to celebrate Christmas here with our usual Christmas carol service, but circumstances are very different at the moment. So if you're at home, or you're even on the bus or on the train watching this, we do hope that you get the, the spirit of Christmas and the message of Christmas through our service this evening. So just remind ourselves, up here in church and with you at home, of God's presence here at this moment, whether we're sat in church or wherever we are in our lives as we're watching this. And we do that by making the sign of the cross. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm just going to start off with a quote from Pope Francis. Christmas reveals the immense love of God for humanity. From that flows also the enthusiasm and the hope for Christians that in our poverty we know that we are loved, we are visited and accompanied by God. So here at this moment, God comes to accompany us in the celebration of Christmas. And you're all very, very welcome to be here this evening or wherever you are when you're watching this. Just going to read the Christmas poem by John Betjeman. The bells of waiting advent ring. The tortoise stove is lit again. The lamp oil light across the night has caught the streaks of winter rain in many a stained glass window sheen from crimson lake to hooker's dream. The holly in the windy hedge and round the manor, manor house the yew will soon be stripped to deck the ledge, the altar, font and arch and pew. And so the villagers can say, the church looks nice on Christmas day. Provincial public houses blaze, corporation tram cars clang, on lightened tenements I gaze, where paper decorations hang, and bunting in the red town hall says, Merry Christmas to you all. And the London shops on Christmas Eve are strung with silver bells and flowers, as hurrying clerks the city leave to the pigeon-haunted classic towers. And marble clouds go scudding by, and many steepled London sky. And girls in slacks remember Dad, and oafish loves remember Mum. And sleepless children hearts are glad, and Christmas morning bells say come. Even to the shining ones who dwell, safe in the Dorchester Hotel. And is it true, and is it true, that this most tremendous tale of all, seen in a stained glass window's hue, a baby in an ox's stall, the maker of the stars and sea, become a child on earth for me? And is it true, for if it is, no loving fingers tying strings around those tissued fripperies, the sweet and silly Christmas things, basalts and inexpensive scent, the hideous tie 
so kindly meant. No love that in a family dwells, no caroling in frosted air, nor all the steeple shaking bells, can this single truth compare that God was man in Palestine and lives today in bread and wine. Virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, 
and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel means God with us. God always keeps his promises. Here the angel explains that this tiny baby was the Emmanuel promised nearly 700 years before in Isaiah. This baby is God. This baby is God keeping his promise and coming to live with his people. God didn't send someone to help us. God himself came to help us. But why did he come? Why did the word come flesh and make his home among us? He came so we could really know him. He lived among us to show us the way, to show us how to live, to save us from sin, and to show us how to really, really love. God never promised our way would be easy, or that his presence with us meant a life of convenience or comfort. But he did promise this, over and over in his word and in his very name, he would be with us through it all and would never leave us. He alone holds the power to turn any difficult situation his very name reminds us that he is always near. What a wonderful comfort to each of us. God is with us always.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for him. There was no room for them at the inn. Let us reflect on these words, these profoundly moving words. For God himself, the saviour of the world, there was no room. Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. From the moment of his birth, and worldly terms, Jesus, the Son of God, was an outsider, seemingly unimportant and powerless. Born in a stable, inhospitable and beyond humble, there is no grandeur here. He is born into poverty as an outsider. And yet, Jesus proves to be the truly powerful one, the one on whom ultimately everything depends. From the poverty of Jesus' birth emerges a miracle in which we are saved, a lesson in how to live our lives, the life God wants us to live. In Christ, God identifies with all who find themselves as outsiders those who struggle, those for whom there seems to be no room. He lived it, he understands it. Despite his majesty, he lived and died as an outsider because he loves us so much. Being a Christian is about leaving behind what the world might suggest is important. Status, wealth, materialism, and following Jesus' path, outside of all these things, and serving others with love and compassion, helping those who are on the outside. Our Lord came as an outsider, and yet so often, we still do not make room for him. This Christmas, let us make room for God, recognising that he offers us the greatest Christmas gift of all time. Forgiveness, a new start, infinite love, and a faith to live our lives by.
thank you very much for coming tonight. It's always a really special evening to be able to, to come here and celebrate the carol service. And extra special this year because we've uh, missed one uh, last year and, and it's, uh, it's something that really starts off our Christmas celebrations in school in real earnest and, and we're very, very grateful for everybody that makes this happen. So first of all, to all the students who I know have been practicing um, for many weeks now. I know you've been practicing for many weeks because you've been getting to the front of the dinner queue every day for choir practice, so congratulations on that. Um, but uh, the, the performance they put in tonight has been really uh, a spectacle, so we're very grateful for everybody who's done that. The musicians as well, and those of you that sang solos, I know it takes more courage than I could ever have to, to stand up in front of a whole uh, church, big audience of people to sing that. And we're also grateful to everybody that's made this happen for the recording so that we can share this with our whole community. Uh, we've got a lot of people here tonight, but I know there'll be an awful lot more at home that will, will enjoy this wherever they get a chance to do so. So we're very grateful. It's, it's a chance for us really to, to be able to share with you what the school is all about um, and, and that really goes back to our values and we talk about love, faith and hope an awful lot and at this time of year we can celebrate a love for one another and we celebrate the love that God has for us and given us his only son at this time of year. What an amazing gift that is and a gift that we can share on a night, on a night like tonight. It, we're allowed to celebrate our faith as well, which is wonderful, a time of year when sometimes it can become more and more frenetic, the chance for us to actually stop and celebrate our faith with each other on a night like tonight is, is really special. And finally, that hope. We see a lot in the newspapers, the press, about social media and pressures on society and, and young people. And just to see you up here tonight gives us all that hope that the future is very bright for you, very bright for the school and, and for our whole community. So a final thank you just for the people that make tonight happen. So Mrs Monteith, who I know has given up an awful lot of time to do this, our staff choir, Mr Aoun, Mr Keown, this is the bit where I get very nervous in case I miss anybody out, Mr Holt, Jacinta, everybody else that's been involved in it um, at the whole the staff choir as well who do it every year uh, particularly brave this year because there's been there's fewer of you this year so to do that uh, is, is very brave as well so thank you very much and i think i'm allowed to do this this year but usually i speak last but it's my favorite part of the year which is to say that we can actually give them all a massive round of applause now so well done everybody. <laughs> finish off, no celebration of our faith is complete without Father Godrick. So Father Godrick, who is a real blessing to our community and has been for many, many years, um, is going to end the evening with a blessing. celebrating Advent and Christmas in the way that you have done just now and for a, a lovely, beautiful, very prayerful celebration this evening. Thank you very much indeed. Let's now stand for our final prayer and blessing. Come Lord, Come into our world of darkness. Your wounded world is yearning for you to come again, for you to lift us up out of our despair. Light up our lives with your coming. Fulfill all our longings with the joy of your birth. Strengthen our resolve to work for change in our world and to share the hope of your birth that every advent brings. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord bless you.
and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and always remain with you. Amen.